Doug Rowland is a heliophysicist at NASA who answered the phone on a citizen complaint about sounding rockets releasing lithium into the atmosphere. The following excerpt from a recorded phone call is common sense evidence that chemtrails is an accepted term used by NASA scientists to describe deployment of chemicals into the atmosphere. In these chemtrails, there's different kinds of chemtrails, as you probably know, different trails at night we use and different trails during the day. Now, it's been done in the 1970s, it's been done in the, recently in the 1990s and 2000s. Yeah, it's very important. We, we, we communicate what we're doing to the public. We're very interested in making sure everyone knows what we're doing. We're not, um, we're a civilian space agency dedicated to science and research and so on. So we're very, uh, very keen to make sure that the taxpayers know what we're doing and everything. So we heard Dr. Rowland voluntarily use the word chemtrails without fear of being called a conspiracy theorist because chemtrails is a logical contraction of chemical trails, just as contrails is a contraction for condensation trails. In fact, the caller is not complaining about chemtrails at all. She's calling NASA to complain about lithium being released by rocket experiments. It's Dr. Rowland who used chemtrails to describe the release of lithium. So let's look at the reasons why chemtrails is a real word and not a conspiracy theory. Number one, the Oxford Dictionary defines chemtrails as, quote, a visible trail left in the sky by an aircraft and believed by some to consist of chemical or biological agents released as part of a covert operation, unquote. Number two, in 1964, NASA and the Virginia Academy of Science used the term chemical trail to describe the release of heavy metals into the atmosphere. Number three, the term chemtrails appears in House Resolution H.R. 2977, sponsored by Representative Dennis Kucinich, where chemtrails was defined as an exotic weapon. Number four, the United States Air Force Academy used the term chemtrails in 1990 as title to a chemistry manual for future Air Force pilots. Number five. In 2013, NASA heliophysicist Douglas E. Rowland used the term chemtrails to describe the release of chemicals in a sounding rocket experiment. The following is a copy of the original audio featuring responses by NASA heliophysicist Doug Rowland. I would love to play you back the recording that um, when I called NASA yesterday <clears throat> and I spoke with someone in your Washington DC office I was told that he's scared to death he's gonna denounce his citizenship and go back to the Philippines. Okay. That's what I was told by NASA yesterday when I called. Okay. And directly you're not from you your office. That conversation with their knowledge? Uh, well, I'm sorry? Did you record that conversation with their knowledge? Uh, are you recording my conversation with that knowledge, sir? No. I'm sorry? No, I'm not recording any conversation. You're not recording any record. conversation with my knowledge, and NASA isn't either, and you can't get through it anyway. If you want to leave a message, it rings and rings and then hangs up on you. Same with Wallop Island. So I would love to leave a message there. Could you t give me a direct uh, answer? Because it says you're the scientist here on the NASA website. Yeah, I'm involved in the project, but... You are a scientist, so then, and you know that this is experimental, you've never done it before? No, it's been done in the 1970s, it's been done in the, recently in the 1990s and 2000s. Oh, that's not what it said on this article here. It hasn't been done since 1970, the lithium release in the daytime. Why would it be done now then, sir? That's scary. Uh, detailed information, if you could please send your comments by email. Okay, you'd like, will you respond to my email if I send them? Happy to answer them, yes. You will. Okay, what was your email, sir? Douglas.e.roland, D-O-U-G-L-A-S. Douglas dot, I'm sorry? E. Uh-huh. Dot Roland, R-O-W-L-A-N-D. Uh-huh, at, uh... NASA dot gov. I'm sorry? NASA dot gov. N-A-S-A dot G-O-V. Okay. Well, I'll be expecting an email back from you then, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's very important. We, we, we communicate what we're doing to the public. We're very interested in making sure everyone knows what we're doing. We're not, um, we're a civilian space agency dedicated to science and research and so on. So we're very, uh, very keen to make sure that the taxpayers know what we're doing and everything. So Well, you know, when the, when the article came out in the major newspapers, including the Huffington Post, there was no mention of lithium, not one. 
Not one mention of lithium until I heard the recording of the actual, I, I listened to it. I listened to the rockets go off. I had no idea there was going to be a lithium dispersed until I heard payload lithium disperse. Right. There was lithium dispersed, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. I think you might be under some misconceptions about what we're doing, but I'm happy to tell you any details that you need. Well, I know that it says in your article that you're doing it for communications. Okay, I'm happy to talk to you more about it. There, there are many reasons we're doing it. Okay. We don't understand how the wind in the upper atmosphere moves. Mm -hmm. In these chemtrails, there's different kinds of chemtrails, as you probably know. Different trails at night we use and different trails during the day. The wind blows them around. They glow either on their own or from scattered sunlight. We take pictures and we can see how the wind trail moves around. And we use that to, to infer what the wind is. Just like if you were taking a picture of an airplane contrail. You can use that to see how the wind was blowing up at those altitudes. This is much higher altitude, so we use these chemical trails. And what, what is the, the purpose of knowing what the wind's going to do in the ionosphere? The purpose is the ionosphere is really to understand our planet. It's very fundamental science. We're trying to understand every day we know there's electric currents that flow over the head. They're just naturally there. They've been there for you know, ever since the Earth had an atmosphere and a magnetic field. And the wind is driven by the sun. The sun heats the atmosphere. The wind blows. And every day that wind drives an electric current. And we're trying to understand what causes that, essentially how does it work in detail. And also importantly, when the sun becomes active with lots of sunspots and lots of uh, magnetic activity, that changes the wind pattern and changes the electric current. So we want to understand both what it is on a regular day when there's no solar activity and then what it is when there's a lot of solar activity. Is there some other kind of a way that you can use it without using dispersing the lithium? We're researching other ways. The lithium is actually harmless to the environment, and we could t show you more about that. But it is tricky to use because we have to, it's very faint. Uh, you can't see it with your naked eye. You have to, you know, have special cameras to see it and so on. So we don't like to use it for that reason. It's hard, it's, in other words, it's hard measurement to make. We're researching other ways to put sensors directly on the rocket to measure the wind, and those are ongoing. We're trying to develop those now. In fact, one of the purposes of this mission was to do that. Okay. Well, you've explained it to me then. I, I, I don't agree with it, but I appreciate you explaining it to me. Well, too, if you have, if you have detailed questions, anything you want. Okay, I will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to research it a little more, and I will email you, and I appreciate you taking the time out to speak to me today, sir. At your call. It's not often we get to hear from members of the public and people who are really interested and concerned with what we're doing. I, I wish, really appreciate your time. I wish more people would call. I really do. I've called my senators. I've called my governor. You can't get through to anyone, sir. You can't get through to anybody. Yeah. I go to my city council. I live in rural North Carolina. They don't care. They, 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 they laugh you out of there. there. There's no other recourse for us, sir, to, as, unless to t talk to people directly and find out what is going on because we're paying for it. Well, I, I don't know how far you are from Wallace Flight Facility. Uh, is, that easy, is that drivable from where you are? Where is it, sir? I, I don't know where it is. It, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's north of Norfolk, Virginia. It's on the eastern shore of Virginia. If you if you if you're at Norfolk, it would probably take you another two and a half hours to get there. Uh huh. So if you're in North Carolina, I don't know where you are, but maybe. I don't right. Know. Yeah, I'm I'm in uh, Western rural North Carolina near the Tennessee border. I have a chance. You might consider either going to Walsh, going to uh, Goddard Space Flight Facility, which is outside of D.C. Uh, there is Clemson University, which is where the all the chemical release uh, work is done. Oh really. Well, that's very close to me. You might contact those guys. That they that is interesting. They'd be happy to explain what they're doing. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, I will do that. Um, just just look, ask for the science department. Well, I, I don't know what department they're in, but Larson, L-A-R-S-E-N, Miguel Larson is the lead. And he's been doing this for decades and can explain in detail what they're doing and why it's, why it's, uh, why it's not an issue uh, for people living. We wouldn't, you know, we, we would be, as government agency, we would not be allowed you know, to do anything that would be harmful. So he, he's under strict control and that sort of thing. So he can explain it to you. He can even show you around, that sort of thing. Okay, and you said his name was Miguel, Miguel Larson with an L? Well, A-R-S-E-N. Okay, at Clemson. Okay, well, thank you so much, Mr. Rowan. I appreciate all of your information. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day.